Good afternoon, students. So today we're going to go over week five. This is, gonna, this is week five, and so you guys are not yet halfway through the class. And this week, uh, for the week five forum, all you have to do is just post your rough draft for your essay one, which is your narrative essay. And that's the same essay that you started during the week two um, when we did the outline. It's the I became a nurse because essay. So that's the essay that we're going to be working on for the Week 5 Forum. And so just post your rough draft to the Week 5 Forum, and then, um, you, and then the second thing you have to do for this week is the Week 5 Quiz. So you can find the prep, the prep information for the Week 5 Quiz in my Week 4 Instructor Session. So just go to the Announcements and go to the Week 4 Instructor Session Zoom recording to get the uh, Week 5 Quiz Prep. And if you need a hard copy of my week five, uh, week four instructor session notes, you can always email me. Good afternoon, KK. How are you doing? You're connecting to audio. Okay, so I f I'll give you some time to respond. And so as I was saying, yeah, go ahead. So how are you doing in the class so far? Everything okay? Yes. That's good. So I was just saying that for this week, all you have to do is just the week five forum where you post your rough draft. The first, that's the first essay where everybody wrote about I became a nurse because. It's the same essay that you worked on in week two. And then uh, the second thing you need to do for week five is the week five quiz. And then you can find the prep information for the week five quiz in the week four instructor uh, Zoom session. So, um, do you need a hard copy of that? Did you take the week five quiz already? No. Uh, okay. Do you need the week? Do you need a copy of the hard, co hard yeah. copy of the? Okay, I will email it to to everybody during the um, after this session. So this session, I'm going to talk about different kinds of essays. Uh, so I will go over that. And then if you have any questions or if you want to go over the week five quiz with me, we could do that after the class. How's that? Yes. Okay. So let's go over the different kinds of essays. So that's what I have planned for, had planned for this particular, and I'll keep it really short. So um, for the week, oh, and next week when you do your week six forum, we're going to be doing a um, narrative passage essay. So the week six forum, this week you are preparing your narrative passage for its final uh, submission. Discuss what reviewing your own work. In other words, for week six, you're gonna talk about revision and how do you revise your paper. And there's gonna be a worksheet posted to the week six forum. And then you're gonna discuss what method of revision do you use to revise your essay one. And so when we revise our essay, first we have, we have two steps. First we check for essay structure, and then second, then we check for grammar, punctuation, and APA errors. And so we will post our essay one rough draft just, li just like we did in the week five forum. The difference between week five and week six is that instead of just pointing out other students' mistakes like we did in week five, we will also discuss revision, proofreading, and editing strategies. Remember, there are three stages to the writing process, pre-writing, writing, and rewriting. So the week six forum represents the last stage of the writing process. And then in, so you have the uh, writing, pre-writing, writing, and rewriting. And then rewriting, that's the last stage of the writing process, has two subgroups in which you have revision, where you check for essay structure, and then proofreading and editing, where we check for grammar errors. So we will discuss how we revise our papers in the week six forum, where I will post a revision worksheet in the week, in the week six forum, and then you can discuss how you revise your paper. Here are the different ways in which you can revise your paper. Do you read your paper out loud? Do you cut up your paragraphs? Do you print out your paper to look at it? Do you have someone read your paper? Or do you read your paper backwards? Do you, take a met, do, you, do you take a break and then correct your paper? Um, do you focus on one grammar error at a time? What kind of 
uh, peer review feedback. Did you get in week five? Did you get it? Did you did you get any appreciation feedback, mentoring feedback, coaching feedback? What kind of feedback would help you most in your week six final draft? And did you color code your paragraphs to make sure your your paragraphs match your thesis? And then week five, week five lecture. I'm going to talk about different kinds of essays. There are eight kinds of essays to write in English. In this class, we will go over the narrative essay, the comparison contrast essay, and the persuasive essay. And so uh, these eight kinds of essays represent eight different ways to do your thesis statement. And so here, the first kind of essay is the cause and effect essay. The cause and effect essay shows the cause and effect of a topic. In one essay, you write about the causes of the topic, and in another essay, you write about the effects of the topic, but not both in one essay. Example, the causes of the COVID-19 epidemic, and therefore your thesis statement would be the causes of the COVID-19 epidemic was cause one, cause two, cause three, and then those three reasons will become your body paragraphs. Or you could write another essay and write the effects of the COVID-19 uh, epidemic. The effects of the COVID-19 epidemic was effect one, effect two, and effect three. Definition essay. A definition essay defines three aspects of the main idea. What is love? What is freedom? And then you would define love is defined as definition one, two, and three. Then you have classification essay. A classification essay classifies people or things into groups. So you could have different kinds of students who attend Fortis, different kinds of foods to eat for better sleep. And then also what we're going to be doing at the, at the end of this class is you're going to be doing a comparison contrast essay. That's going to be essay two, where you're going to compare two similar things. You'll, you'll start doing that after week seven. Then a persuasive essay, you're going to do that in week nine, nine and ten, where you're going to convince the reader of your point of view, and you're going to go to procon.org website to get topics. And then an example illustrative essay solves a problem and gives examples or illustrations of a topic. A descriptive essay is, describes a topic, so why Los Angeles is a great or not so great place to live. A process essay is a how-to essay, how to lose weight, how to get rich, uh, anything, any kind of how-to. And then an expository essay informs or educates the reader about the topic. A narrative essay is based on the, the life of the reader, why I became a nurse, the most embarrassing event in my life. So when we write an essay, we make a claim. We back up that claim with three reasons, and then those three reasons become our body paragraphs. When we write a story, we just write about the events of what happened. And so I posted a, a, a video about the difference between a narrative story versus a narrative um, essay in the, in the announcements. And you can watch that video to understand the difference between a story and an essay. We write stories for creative writing for fiction and we write essays for academic writing. In other words, when we do academic writing, it's never fiction, it's always nonfiction. it's always true. When we write a story, story belongs to fiction and some nonfiction, while essays always belong to nonfiction. So that's the difference between stories versus essays, where stories can be fictional while essays are always nonfictional. So let's start with the very first kind of essay, effect, cause, and effect. So the effects of World War II on China were widespread, were widespread destruction, countless deaths, and massive evacuation of entire cities. And so here you, here you have the thesis statement, which is the last sentence of your first paragraph. And then when you have your reasons in your thesis statement, it's going to match your three body paragraphs. So the effects of World War II were Effect number one, widespread destruction. So then the body paragraph would become widespread destruction. Countless deaths. Then the second body paragraph would be countless deaths. 
and massive evacu evacuation. And then the third body paragraph would be massive evacuation. And then you have your conclusion. And so this is the essay structure for your five paragraph essay structure. And then you either write about the effects or you write about the causes. So here you have the causes of uh, COVID-19 would be cause one, cause two, and cause three. And then the effects of COVID-19 would be effect one, effect two, effect three. So that's co cause and effect. Classification essay is when we put everything into groups, different kinds of something. So on the road, there are many kinds of drivers, careful drivers, reckless drivers, and angry drivers. And then this is your thesis statement. And then the thesis statement is always the last sentence of the first paragraph. And then here, careful drivers become paragraph uh, one. Then reckless drivers become paragraph two. And then um, uh, angry drivers become paragraph three. And then in your conclusion, you're going to repeat your thesis statement as the first sentence of the last paragraph, and then summarize your essay in five sentences. So, so far we've gone over cause and effect and classification essay. So you could say there are many different kinds of, so anything that says different kinds of, that's called a classification essay because you're classifying things into groups, or you're classifying people into groups. And this is used a lot in science. Um, so here, classification, thesis statement would be group one, group two, group three. And then here you have paragraph, body paragraph one becomes group one, body paragraph two becomes group two, and body paragraph three becomes group three, and then you have your conclusion. And this we're going to do for our, starting in week seven, we're going to be doing a comparison contrast essay where you're going to compare and contrast two things. You're going to state for me which one is better than the other, and then you're going to use your body paragraphs to back up the reasons why you like one thing over the other. So here, New York is a better place to live than Los Angeles because New York has better food, entertainment, and transportation. And so here you would say, New York is better than LA because of the food. Then you're going to write one, five to seven sentences about why New York has better food. New York is a better place to live because of its entertainment. Then you're going to write five sentences about why New York is a great place to live because it's got better entertainment than LA. And then your third paragraph would be New York is better than LA because New York has subways and so it's easier to get around. So it's got better transportation. So New York is a better place to live because of the food, the entertainment, and the transportation. And so the three reasons in your thesis statement then become the three reasons for your body paragraphs. And then here you have your conclusion where you're going to repeat your thesis statement as the first sentence of the last paragraph, and then you'll summarize your essay in five sentences. So is everything clear so far? Yeah? Okay, I take that to mean yes. All right, and then, um, so the first one in which I went over, New York is a better place to live than, in, in, than LA because of the food, entertainment, and transportation. And then food, entertainment, and transportation each become, it becomes its own paragraph. This is known as the alternate method. You could also write your comparison contrast. So this takes up five paragraphs to write the alternate method. But if you use the block method, it only takes four paragraphs. And so here you have the same thesis statement used as the last sentence of the first paragraph. And then you would have New, New York has better food, entertainment, and transportation. So you're going to write in one paragraph everything about New York. And then you're going to write in another paragraph everything about Los Angeles. And then you're going to, um, then you're going to, in your conclusion, tell which city you would like to live in best and why. So that's known as the block method because you talk about one, uh, you know, one place, but you have to put it in this order. You have to put food, entertainment, transportation in that order. Then you talk about food, 
entertainment and transportation in that order. First you talk about New York, food, transportation, and entertainment in that order in one paragraph. Then you talk about Los Angeles, food, entertainment, transportation in one paragraph. And so if you're somebody who likes to talk a lot or write, writes really long paragraphs, you should, be, you should use the alternate method. But if you can be very concise, then you, should, then you can use the block method. So it's totally up to you which method you use, whether the block or alternate method for your, because uh, starting week seven, you, we're going to start doing another essay. So weeks one through six, we're going to be working on the narrative essay, and then weeks seven through 12, we're going to be working on comparison contrast. And also in weeks nine and 10, we're going to do a persuasive essay. So basically, you're going to do three essays total in English 101, narrative essay, persuasive essay, comparison contrast essay. So those are going to be the three essays you're going to know really, really well for you. But all of the essays have a similar, similar structure. As I go through all these different essays and these flow charts, all the different essays all have an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. All of them have a thesis statement that is the last sentence of the first paragraph, and then the thesis statement is the first sentence of the last paragraph, and then the three reasons of the, of the thesis statement become your three body paragraphs. So all of the essays uh, are structured in that way because when we write an essay, we're writing about nonfiction. We're writing about something that is true. And so that is why, and we always have to use credible evidence uh, in order to prove our point. And so the next essay is a definition essay. In a definition essay, you want to define what something is. And so if I want to say, what is love? What is freedom? What is? So the uh, what is uh, essay is a definition essay. So the word qi in Chinese means extension of one's soul, gaseous liquid, and one's breath. And so here I define the word qi. And so here definition one goes into body paragraph one, extension of one's soul, gaseous liquid becomes definition two, uh, paragraph two, and then one's breath becomes definition three, paragraph three. So that the three definitions of a definition essay become your body paragraphs. And then in your conclusion, it's always the same, where you repeat the thesis statement and then you, you uh, summarize your essay in five sentences. So each paragraph needs to have five to seven sentences. And that's the same across all the different kinds of essays that you can write. So a definition essay answers the question, what is? All right, so the next essay that we're going to cover is, oh, and this is still definition essay. So definition essay would be topic, controlling idea, definition one, definition two, definition three. And so body paragraph one will be definition one. Body paragraph two will be definition two. Body paragraph three will be definition three. And then here, these three body paragraphs are the same as the three reasons in your, um, in your essay, thesis statement. The next kind of essay we're going to go over is a descriptive essay. A descriptive essay simply describes an event, describes a person, describes an idea. And, and so other names for a descriptive essay are example essay and expository essay. Because in a descriptive essay, you give examples of your description. And so in this, in this particular example, I am describing a, a holiday or an event. To celebrate Chinese New Year, my family plans a big reunion, a big dinner, and lots of red envelopes. And so basically in Chinese, in Chinese New Year, uh, every year, if you're a child, you all, the, the parents will give you a red envelope filled with money. And that's supposed to represent good fortune. And so here, uh, I describe the event of, Chinese, of how I celebrate Chinese New Year. So first, for Chinese New Year, all the families get together for a big family reunion. So that's five to seven sentences body paragraph one. Second, then body paragraph two, everyone gets together and has a big dinner. 
And then last but not least, after we have our big dinner, then the adults hand out red envelopes to children. It's similar to Christmas where adults give gifts to children. You know, it's a big holiday. And so kids, so as a kid growing up, I loved Christmas and I loved Chinese New Year because in both cases, I got free stuff. And, they, and also they let us stay up late. So here you have your thesis statement with the three things that you're gonna describe. So you have description one becomes paragraph one, description two becomes paragraph two, description three becomes paragraph three, and then in your conclusion, you repeat your thesis statement and you summarize your essay in five sentences. And just like all the other essays, five to seven sentences for each essay, and then before your thesis statement, you need a hook and five background sentences. So that's, that I didn't include in all of these flowcharts. But you always have to have a hook and five background sentences, and then your thesis statement is the last sentence of the first paragraph. And so here is your descriptive essay. You have thesis statement is topic plus opinion. Controlling idea is the same thing as opinion. Then description one, description two, description three. And then here you have description one, which matches uh, description one in your thesis. Description two matches description two in your thesis. And description three matches description three. So here I, I talked about to celebrate Chinese New Year, you have a big family reunion, big dinner, lots of money. So here I repeat the same thing, family reunion, lots of uh, big dinner, and lots of money. And then this, in this way we call this essay coherence. When your thesis statement matches the body topic sentences, that is known as the five, um, five body, the five essay structure, the five paragraph essay structure. And so it's, all, it's the same in all the different essays. An illustrative essay illustrates, or also it, illustrate, it illustrates an idea or a place. And an illustrative essay is the same thing as a descriptive essay, which is the same thing as an example essay. So those four essays are all interchangeable, descriptive essay, illustrative essay, and expository essay. And so just like a descriptive essay, and the reason why I, I, I um, give you all of these different variations is that in different books, some books are going to call it a descriptive essay, some will call it an illustrative essay, some are going to call it an expository essay, but it all means the same thing, okay? These, these four kinds of essays overlap. So in an illustrative, illustrative essay, you describe a place. So some unusual places to get married are under the water, on top of a roller coaster, and in the Star Trek spaceship in Las Vegas. So some people get married under the water, so that becomes body paragraph one. Other people get married on a roller coaster, so that's body paragraph two. And then uh, while others get married on a Star Trek spaceship in Las Vegas. And so that the three reasons for your illustrative essay become your three body paragraphs. And then you're going to repeat your thesis statement and summarize your essay in five sentences. And so here, an illustrative essay is the same thing as an example essay. So that's why you have topic, controlling idea, and then example one, where do people get married? They get married under the water. Where do people get married? They get married on a roller coaster or they get married in a Star Trek spaceship. So roller coaster, under the water, spaceship. So that the three examples in your illustrative essay become the three examples in your body paragraphs. Then you repeat your thesis statement and summarize your essay in five sentences. Now here, we're gonna be doing persuasive essay. You're gonna write a persuasive essay in week nine and week 10. And so week nine forum and week 10 forum will all be about persuasive essay. A persuasive essay means that you wanna convince the reader of your point of view. And you need to take a position, either you're for it or against it. And so in, in an essay, and then if you're for the topic, then you have to tell me three reasons why you are for the topic. If you're against the topic, then you tell me three reasons why you're against the topic. So an example, if I'm for abortion, 
Then I've got to give you three reasons why I'm for abortion. Okay, that's one essay. Or if I'm against abortion, then I give three reasons why I'm against abortion. You can't say I'm for and against abortion, and you cannot say I'm giving you pros and cons. You have to take a position, and then you clarify that position uh, in your uh, thesis statement. Not in your, th yeah, in your thesis statement and in your body paragraphs. So in this case, uh, in this persuasive essay, the student wrote about all teachers should be paid more money to show respect for teachers, to prevent teachers from quitting, and to attract young people to teaching. And so here, topic is teachers, should be paid more money is the opinion, and then the three reasons would be to show respect, to prevent teachers from quitting, and to attract young people to, to teaching. And then these three reasons then become your body paragraphs. Show respect to teachers becomes paragraph one. Prevent teachers from quitting becomes paragraph two. Attract young people to teaching becomes paragraph three. And for your week nine and ten um, essay topic, you can find uh, top. You can look for topics for your persuasive essay in the procon.org website. So I'll be uh, uploading that uh, name of that website. When we, when we get closer to week 8, 9, and 10. So right now, so remember to think about what you want to write about for your persuasive essay and also start thinking about what you're going to write about for your comparison contrast essay. Those are your two remaining essays after you finish the narrative essay. So narrative essay finishes in week 6 and that counts as your midterm grade. And then in week 12, you're going to finish your comparison contrast essay, and that's going to count as your final, final grade, final exam grade, will be your week 12 final draft of your uh, comparison contrast essay. So in a persuasive essay, you want to take a position, you want to take a side, and then you explain why your side is correct, and you want to convince the reader that your point of view, your position, is the better position and is the only position that anyone should take. And so that's known as a persuasive essay. So here is how a persuasive essay looks like, also known as an argumentative essay. There is a difference between a persuasive and an argumentative essay. In an argumentative essay, we add in counter-argument and rebuttal paragraphs. Usually when I teach um, English in English 101 I simply teach people how to do a persuasive essay then in English 105 which is usually the next this this school doesn't have that but most schools do usually in the second writing class I then teach the argumentative essay in which I teach you what is a counter argument uh, paragraph and what's a rebuttal paragraph and so for you in English 101 putting in the counter argument and rebuttal paragraph will be optional which is why I didn't put it in here in my, in my flowcharts. Normally, if you're going to go for the challenge of writing a slightly harder e e essay, you put in your counter-argument and rebuttal paragraphs over here. What is a counter-argument and rebuttal paragraph? KK, do you know what that is? So I'll take that to mean no. And so when we write a counter-argument paragraph, that means that we write about the other side. So let's say I think that abortion is immoral. And so then, then the counter-argument paragraph would be, many people think that abortion is moral because um, women feel they have the right to do whatever they want with their bodies. Women feel that if they were raped, they should, they do, and if they do not want the rapist's child, then they should be able to get an abortion and therefore abortion is moral. So that is what a counter-argument paragraph is, is where you briefly talk about what the other side thinks. Then in your rebuttal paragraph, you would write, you go, you go back to your argument. However, I believe that uh, abortion is immoral because. So basically, you stick in a little paragraph about the other side before flipping back to your argument. So when you do that in your essay, then that's known as an argumentative essay. So if you include the counter-argument and rebuttal paragraph, then this becomes an argumentative essay. If you don't put in those two little paragraphs about counter-argument 
and rebuttal, then what you have is a persuasive essay. And so that's the, that's, the, that's the subtle difference between the two. But what these two both have in common is that you have to convince the reader of your point of view. And so for English 101, it's up to you if you want to decide if you want to stick in a counter argument or a rebuttal paragraph. However, for your class, you are required to have at least one APA reference citation and one APA reference uh, in-text citation. So that is required for this, for this class because it's written into your rubric. So every time you want to know what are the expectations of my assignment, you should always click on the rubric and make sure that as you write your paper, you fulfill every part of the rubric because when I grade your paper, then each part of the rubric is worth a certain amount of points. And so all teachers, uh, all of us teachers are given this rubric by the school. So every English teacher has to use the same rubric to grade that essay. And so I will be using that rubric also. So make sure when you do your assignments that you fulfill all of the expectations from the rubric because that's what it's for. Okay, so when you write your persuasive essay, you're going to have your thesis statement stating your side of the issue. You're going to have your topic, and with abortion and then controlling idea which is your opinion is immoral and then because reason one reason two reason three so this is your thesis statement which is the last sentence of the first paragraph and then you have your hook five background sentences then you have your thesis so those are the three parts of your introduction and then um, reason one becomes body paragraph one Reason 2 becomes body paragraph 2, and reason 3 becomes body paragraph 3. And then in your conclusion, you repeat your thesis statement, and then after that, you summarize your essay in five sentences. And so that's going to be your persuasive argumentative essay for weeks 9 and 10. And then um, for your process essay, you're not going to be doing a process essay in this class. But it's good to know all the different kinds of essays to write. So for a process essay, this is a how-to essay, how to get rich, how to lose weight, how to uh, be a good nurse, uh, how to be a good teacher, how to, how to, how to, anything with how to. And so if you want to show your reader step by step the process of how to do something, that's what you write about in this essay. So here, your thesis statement would be to impress the boss. One needs to dress professionally, take initiative, and always be enthusiastic about work. And therefore, step one, to impress the boss, take initiative. Step two, be enthusiastic. Step three, dress professionally. So those are the three steps that you take in order to impress your boss. Then step one, dress professionally, becomes body paragraph one. Always take initiative, becomes body paragraph two. And then always be enthusiastic about work, becomes body paragraph three. So step one, step two, step three, all become your body paragraphs. And step one, step two, step three of your thesis statement, of your process essay, uh, becomes your body paragraphs. And then for your conclusion, you repeat your thesis statement in the first sentence, and then you summarize this, your essay in five sentences. It's always the same thing, the conclusion. And so here it is, step one, step two, step three of your process essay. You have your topic to impress the boss. Uh, you dress professionally. You um, take initiative. And then I forgot what, what step three was. And you, oh, always be enthusiastic about work. So step one becomes paragraph one. Step two becomes paragraph two, and step three becomes body paragraph three. And then you're going to have something called the problem solution, uh, problem solution essay. And in a problem solution essay, problem solution essays are used in proposals. If you're going to write a business proposal, if you're going to write a research proposal, then problem solution essays are used mainly in business and science. And so here, in a problem solution essay, the first half of the essay, you talk about the problem, you state the problem, 
and in the second half of the essay you state the solution. So that's known as a business proposal or a research proposal. Any kind of proposal usually has a problem solution kind of a structure. So an example would be uh, you state the problem. So let's say the problem is climate change. Temperatures are getting hotter, causing extreme weather, extreme weather like hurricanes, floods, or droughts. Purpose. What to do to mitigate the effects of climate change. Thesis. To solve the problem of climate change, nations need to band together to implement solution A, solution B, solution C. So here you state the problem. This is, this is equivalent to your introduction paragraph. Then your body paragraph would state the three solutions. Solution A would be paragraph two. Solution B would be paragraph three. Solution C would be paragraph four. And then you have your conclusion. So what more needs to be studied? So that is a problem solution uh, essay. And uh, the last essay, an expository essay, an expository essay covers all of these essays. An expository essay simply means an essay that informs the reader of your topic. And so all of these topics, uh, all, of these, all of these essays, okay, all of them are known as expository essays. Expository simply means to expose to the reader the facts of the topic. That's it. And so all of these uh, essays are different kinds of expository essays and they're all different ways in which you can express yourself in order to tell the reader the facts and figures of your topic. It's also the eight different ways in which you can write your thesis statement and it's also the eight different ways in which you can write your body paragraphs. And so in English the eight different ways to write is, is pretty much covered in all of these um, you know in all, in all of these um, flow charts. Eh, yeah, that's it. I told you this was short. So if I go straight to the, to the beginning, this doesn't go to the beginning, does it? Huh. I, was try, I tried to make it go, go to, the, to, to home, but it wouldn't go to home. So you just have to wait until, I don't know why, do I just press home? Nope. So the different kinds of essays in English, I think that I um, summarized it. Uh, all that should be right here. Yeah, there it is. So the different kind, the eight different ways in which you can write in English cause and effect essay, definition essay, classification essay, comparison contrast essay, persuasive and argumentative essay, descriptive, illustrative example essay, process essay, expository essay, and narrative essay. And that's it for this week's, um, so it's really short this week. I told you that this week's uh, uh, you know, lesson is really short. And so that way I have room for if you have any questions. So now I'm at the end of my um, very short lecture on different kinds of essays. So KK, this is the time for you to ask questions. Do you have any questions about this class, about your essays, or about any of the assignments? Because if you have, because I'll, I'll take your silence to me no, and then I'll sign off, and then, and hope that you join me again next week. So, do you, so KK, do you have any questions for, for me for this class? So I'll take that to mean that you don't have any questions, and you're good to go. And so what I'll do for you is I will send you the week five, um, quiz notes and uh, and I wish you well. So for week five, all you have to do, so, so kind of a reminder to all of the students, all you have to do for week five is for the week five forum, all you have to do is post the rough draft of your first narrative essay in which you wrote about, I became a nurse because. Then for week, so that's number one, week five forum. And then the second thing you need to do is take your week five quiz. And so I will, um, right after this lecture, I will upload this video to your announcements. And then I will also upload your um, week, my week five uh, quiz notes for, so that you can take your week five quiz. 
So I hope that you enjoyed my um, very short week five lecture this week. So that gives you extra time to study for your quiz. And if there are no more questions, I will just say goodbye and hope and wish for you a really good week. And see you next see you, see you next week. And next week, yes, and next week, week six, I will go over the week seven quiz. So next week I will go over the next the very last quiz. You'll have no more quizzes after week seven. It's all finished. And then I mean quizzes. Your quizzes are all finished. So did you have any questions? I was about to to leave. KK, did you have any questions? No. 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 Okay. So I hope to see you next week. And did you like this uh, uh, lecture? Yes. yes, I did. Did it help you with the essay structure and understanding it better? Yes. yes. That's good. So that means that you're going to write excellent essays from now on. Yes. Yes. So yes. I'll see yes. you. I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. All right. Okay.